Hello everyone, welcome to KZGN News. Today we'll bring you news about the City Council meeting coming up tomorrow, a Chapman study about people's fears, KZGN's Talking Points editorial, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Wickney. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. First, I'll start with a reminder that tomorrow evening will be the next regular meeting of the City Council. The main important topic on the agenda is the first detailed report we will get concerning the replacement of the City's wastewater treatment plant, which is now on China Lake. Representatives from the consulting firm Provost & Pritchard will give a PowerPoint presentation pertaining to the wastewater treatment plant facility plan update for the proposed new wastewater treatment facility. This study will compare two potential locations of the new plant. It will also compare two types of wastewater treatment. And it will provide the first real cost estimates for each of the alternatives. We have heard estimates in the past range anywhere from $30 million to $75 million for a new plant. So the report will be eye-opening and informative tomorrow evening. What do you fear in America? Well, Chapman University did a survey of Americans' fears this year. It provides an interesting look into the fears of average Americans. A random sampling of more than 1,500 adults from across the United States were asked to rate their level of fear about 88 different fears across a huge variety of topics. The topics included crime, the government, disasters, personal anxieties, technology, and many other categories. They were asked to rate their level of fear on a scale ranging from 1, not afraid, to 4, very afraid. The scores are represented here. Government corruption, 58%. Cyber terrorism, 45%. Corporate tracking personal data, 45%. Terrorist attacks, 44%. Government tracking personal data, 41%. Biowarfare, 41%. Identity theft, 40%. Economic collapse, 39%. Running out of money, 38%. Credit card fraud, 37%. Gun control, 37%. There's a fear of war at 36%. Obamacare, 36%. Illness, 35%. Pandemics, 34%. And nuclear attack, 34%. Well, what do you think of those ratings? The top fear is fear of our own government at 58%. It's interesting to see running out of money at 38% and fear of gun control at 37%. Just below the top 10 in the top 15, we're also, we also saw a fear of Obamacare at 36%. Oh, and one other interesting category was this one. Are you ready? Fear of zombies. Yes, fear of zombies. 8.5% have a fear of zombies. Wow. In news from China Lake, there is a planned Retiree Appreciation Day scheduled for November 5th. The state was selected to accommodate base retirees that may also be attending the Petroglyph Festival November 7th and 8th. The event will be a buffet lunch to be held from 11.45 a.m. to 1.45 p.m. at Casa Corona on North Norma Street. The topic of the lunch will be to inform the retirees on the latest WD technologies. The program will be presented at 9 a.m. to noon at the McLean Center. Doors there will open at 8.45 a.m. Reservations and advance payment must be made to the Retiree Affairs Office by October 30th. For base access and other info, call the RAO weekdays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and from 1 to 3 p.m. Call them at 760-939-0978 or email to retiredactives at mchsi.com. And don't forget the Desert Empire Fair coming this Thursday. The fair opens at 4 p.m. on Thursday and will run through Sunday. The fair will have rides from Butler Amusements. There will be about 100 vendors, concessionaires, and local groups displaying their items. And there will be featured events Friday and Saturday nights as well. We'll have more info on these tomorrow. In news from the Ridgecrest Gun Range, the Sierra Desert Gun Club, and the Girl Scouts last Saturday, Eight members from the Girl Scout Troop 56 spent the day out at the Ridgecrest Gun Range having some serious fun while learning about firearm safety and marksmanship. The weather was perfect on Saturday. The young ladies practiced target shooting with 22 rimfire target rifles. The event was made possible by the Sierra Desert Gun Club, which has a shooting range at the Ridgecrest Gun Range facility. 
Several volunteers from the club taught the Girl Scouts about sight alignment, breath control, trigger control, and several other aspects to good shooting. The rifles and nearly 600 rounds of ammunition were made available by several local supporters of youth shooting sports events. The Girl Scouts became interested in shooting after attending camp last summer. When they learned about the Ridgecrest gun range, they were very enthusiastic about creating a troop shoot in order to learn more about gun safety and developing better shooting skills. For the appearance of the targets, each of these young ladies showed a marked improvement in their shooting skills by lunchtime, a day well spent studying the art of trigger trigger-ometry. The Ridgecrest gun range is an outdoor gun range on 170 acres of private property. In addition to the large 600-yard public range, the range is home to the Sierra Desert Gun Club, Roberts with Vigilantes, Coastal Archery, and Saracosa Community College shooting ranges. To learn more about the Ridgecrest Gun Range, go to their website at www.rgra.org. And speaking of the shooting and fishing sports, we get this story from Assemblywoman Shannon Grove. Assemblywoman Shannon Grove plans to hold a town hall in Weldon this month geared towards wildlife fishing and hunting enthusiasts if they are interested in learning more about the state's management of fish and wildlife. Grove will also give a capital update for constituents interested in the good, the bad, and the ugly legislation coming out of Sacramento. I know many of my constituents are worried about the health of recreational fishing and hunting in Kern County, especially after four years of drought, said Assemblyman Shannon Grove. That's why I'm bringing several state wildlife officials to Weldon to explain the state's management practices, answer questions, and listen firsthand to constituent concerns. Craig Steller, Environmental Program Manager for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and Stafford Lair, Fisheries Ma Branch Chief with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, will cover topics such as fish stocking, wild game management, and the impacts of the drought on recreational hunting and fishing. Fish and Wildlife Town Hall will be held Friday, October 23rd, from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. It'll be at the South Fork Women's Club at 6488 Fay Ranch Road in Weldon. For more event details, call Assemblywoman Shannon Groves Bakersfield office at 661-395-2995. Now stay with us. Coming up next will be KZGN's News Talking Points editorial. Welcome back. Now it's time for the 87th KZGN News Talking Points editorial. Here's today's topic. What do you think is the biggest threat to America compared to our presidential candidate's stated fears? But first, a couple final comments about two past editorials, as they are still causing quite a bit of discussion on the blogs. The topic was more talk about mental illness associated with guns. There have been so many comments, I'll just summarize today. Not surprisingly, the differences between the comments are based on two main theories. First, guns are the problem and more gun control is needed. Second, keeping mentally unstable people away from things such as guns so they can't kill people. Some people believe we can pass more gun control laws that will stop mass shootings like the one at recent school shootings. I don't agree with that. My position is guns are not the problem, just as knives, baseball bats, cars, or whatever some may think is the problem. The problem is passing a law that enables the gun background check system to check mental status of potential buyers. This would require involvement of the lawmakers, the medical professionals, and constitutional lawyers to come together to get rid of that part of the background check system that just doesn't work now. Now today's topic. What do you think is the biggest threat to America compared to our presidential candidate's stated fears. I chose this topic because of the story I just ran at the beginning of this newscast. It was a story about Chapman University doing a survey of American fears this year. It provides an interesting look into the fears of average Americans. A random sampling of more than 1,500 adults from across the United States were asked to rate their level of fear about 88 different fears across a huge variety of topics. The topics included crime, the government, disasters, personal anxieties, technology, and many others. They were asked to rate their level of fear on a scale ranging from one, not afraid, to four, very afraid. The top five were these. Government corruption, 58%, cyber terrorism, 45%, 
corporate tracking personal data, 45%, terrorist attack, 44%, and government tracking personal data, 41%. Did you notice two of the top five were fearing our own government? Another two of them concerned some form of terrorism. And the other one was fear of corporate doing the same thing the government does. I have to compare these fears with the last presidential debates. First is the Democrat debate last week. Because the moderator asked them what they thought were the biggest threat to the United States, the moderators didn't ask that clear question to the Republican debate, but they should have. The questions in the Republican debate were more intended to get the candidates to attack each other instead of asking questions on the issues. But in the Republican debate, they all cited ISIS, extremists, and Islamic terrorists, and Iran as a big threat to us. That matches the survey response for the two of the top five highest fear categories. The fear of terrorist attack and cyber terrorism. Now, back to what the Democrats fear the most, as compared to the study. Four of the five Democrat candidates said global warming as our biggest threat. The Chapman study had the people rate the fear of global warming at 21 on the list with 30% fearing it. Only one Democrat candidate mirrored the people in this study with his fear of terrorism and ISIS crisis in the Middle East as the biggest fear. Another huge charge for the five Democratic candidates was their fear of the NRA, the National Rifle Association, and the crowd cheered their comments that the NRA has to be stopped. Well, I have to say, the NRA doesn't even show up on the list of fears for these people, yet fear of gun control does show up as the people's 11th highest fear. Their fear of gun control was even above categories such as war, Obamacare, nuclear attacks, and civil unrest. One interesting fear, as expressed by Republican candidate Donald Trump, was illegal immigration. Well, this topic was also on the list. It came in as the 23rd highest fear at 30%. But in contrast, the Democrats have no fear of illegal immigration, or, I'm sorry, undocumented residents, as they prefer to call them. We can't use the term illegal or alien anymore. Some sad categories was the fear of illness, loneliness, and dying. This is a real fear for many people, and one we should pay attention to as to our family, friends, and neighbors in their time of need. Another fear way down the list was the fear of mass shootings. 16% of the people fear that possibility. And of course, I remind everyone of the fear I mentioned in the story earlier, the fear of zombies. Really, some people fear an unreal horror fabrication, zombies. 8.5% have that fear of zombies. But there was also a fear of ghosts by almost 10% of the people. But there are a lot of unexplained things in history that lead many to believe in ghosts. A surprising category that didn't make the list was a fear of aliens, extraterrestrials. But as a comparison to the presidential debates, it seems by the numbers that the Republicans were somewhat closer to the people in the survey by a rather large amount. The Democrats came in with the mid to lower ranges of the people in the Chapman study, with the exception of two of the top five categories, that being fear of the government in two ways. First, government corruption, and the government tracking personal information. There was also the fear of private industry tracking personal information. I think most, but not all, of the candidates have some agreement of these fears. The difference, though, would be the differing approaches by the two parties to solve the fears. But that discussion would be a whole another topic by itself. I'd like to thank Chapman University for this study. It was real eye-opening, and it was fun to compare it to the current candidates. What is also interesting is that some of these top fears do have political solutions. It just remains to be seen if our politicians can fix them. But having one top contender under, under investigation for illegal email use and lying about it doesn't help the perception of stopping government corruption. And for someone out there that would criticize me for picking on Clinton, if you have information of any of the other current candidates being under legal investigation for breaking any laws, let me know. I'll include that with any comments I get on this editorial. In conclusion, comparing the people's fears to the two parties was interesting. It would appear that the Republicans are much closer to the people's ratings in this study than the Democratic candidates. I'm Tom Winnick, and that's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. If you have any comments about this editorial or would like to discuss or recommend a topic, I'd like to hear from you. 
please email them to info at kzgn.net. Now stay tuned for weather and sports after the break. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Keith for the weather. Thank you, Tom. The National Weather Service is forecasting a risk of severe thunderstorms for parts of southwestern U.S. from central and eastern Arizona across central and southern New Mexico and into parts of west Texas. Temperatures across the nation. Carolinas came in at 63, Georgia 64, Arkansas 75, North Texas 68, Arizona 76, and Los Angeles at 70. For a forecast here in the IWV tonight, mostly clear with a low around 54, north-northwest wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. On Wednesday, sunny with a high near 77, north-northwest wind, 10 miles per hour. Wednesday night, mostly clear with a low around 50, west wind, 5 miles per hour. On Thursday, sunny with a high near 77, south-southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Thursday night, mostly clear with a low around 58, west wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Friday, sunny with a high near 78, west-northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Friday night, mostly clear with a low around 59, southeast wind, 5 miles per hour. And on Saturday, sunny with a high near 82, west-northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 62, south southeast wind, 5 miles per hour. And on Sunday, Sunny with a high near 85, west wind, 5 miles per hour. And as a look at your forecast for the IWV, now back to Tom and the rest of the KZGN News. Thanks, Keith. And now Tom Heck with sports. And a very pleasant Tuesday afternoon to everyone. Let's start with a local reminder, Burroughs High School football Friday at Apple Valley. The game will be at Bass Stadium in Apple Valley. If you can't get out to the game, which starts at 7 o'clock, you can tune in on 1240 a.m. KLOA starting at 6.50 on Friday night. Now, last week, we forgot to mention, important note, that the JV football team and the freshman football team both won their games against a very good Asperia team. Both teams now have won two games in a row, the JV and the freshman. Both teams will play this Thursday against Apple Valley. The freshman and JV games will be here at Burroughs, a varsity game, as I mentioned, away. Now, let's talk about something that I, I really have a lot of respect for Anthony Barnes over at Murray Junior High School. He's a longtime high school cross country coach and track coach, and he's an instructor, teacher over at Murray Middle School. And he started the junior high program over there for cross country and really got a lot of kids involved. And uh, I think just a great springing board for the high school program to get those kids interested at an early age. But um, he passed along that his boys finished fourth, the girls fifth in their varsity races. Now this was a uh, end of the year run they had at Mount Sac, which is a very tough course. Ben Toller placed eighth, and I guess that was a school record of 12-17. And Leah Thompson, tenth, and that's a school record of 13-58. They both uh, earned individual honors in each of their events, and the previous records were by Alan Lloyd and Jennifer Spear, and that were, was years ago, so congratulations to them. Now, both teams managed to run the same time records also for the course. On the girls' side, Maria Wilson had the biggest improvement of the day, running 19.12 in that two-mile. The previous best was 21 minutes and 47, and Kristen Barton, 18 minutes and 17 seconds, a previous best, 18.54. For the boys, Marcio Chavez improved from 17.19 to 17 minutes, and Derek Kahlberg tied his best of 16.25. So congratulations to the Murray Junior High cross country team, boys and girls, on a good season. Don't get to mention much about them, but glad we can do so. And there will be a fundraiser, and it'll be Murray hosting it at the Over the Hill Track Club Annual Turkey Trot, November 26th. So if you have uh, any interest in that, you can email Anthony Barnes over at Murray Middle School, and he'll get you going on the Over the Hill Track Club annual turkey race here up at Saracoso. Okay, Major League Baseball. The Toronto Blue Jays aren't dead yet. They took a big lead last night against Kansas City. They held on. They win 11-8 series now, 2-1. to 
And the next game, game number four, is this afternoon in Toronto. Also tonight, it'll be the Mets and the Cubs. That'll be game three in Chicago. The next three games in Chicago with the Mets leading two games to nothing. So right now, it looks like it might be the Mets winning the National League and possibly Kansas City and the American. Although Toronto with two more games at home before they would go back to the opponent's field. Now, the way the system works, two games at home, three games away, then two games back at home. Hard to say who really has the advantage there. I think if you get a split the first two games and then you win the next three games at home, obviously you win the whole thing. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, Lamar Odom doing a lot better. Uh, MSN reported today, though, that he may have to have a kidney transplant. Uh, he's now off life support, sitting up talking to people, the former Laker and Clippers star. Okay, let's talk about the top 10 teams in football. Ohio State stays undefeated. Baylor, Utah. Baylor destroys everybody every week. Utah wins again at home against Arizona State. TCU won an easy game at Iowa State. LSU won. Clemson won big. Michigan State had that unbelievable win against Michigan. If you didn't see that game, go to michiganfootball.com and watch the ending of that game. It is incredible. You wouldn't believe it if... Unless you saw it, a muff punt, last game of the last uh, play of the game. Florida State, Stanford, Notre Dame, and UCLA round out. Or I beg your pardon, Iowa round out the other top spots this weekend. Cal and UCLA, Utah will visit USC, and Washington will be at Stanford. Washington lost a tough 26-20 game to Oregon at home last Saturday night after beating USC here a week ago Thursday. That's your sports for this Tuesday afternoon. I'm Tom Heck for KCGN. So that's the news for today. All of the KCGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing us. KCGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Now stay tuned for Ridgecrest Talk.